Howdy ho! What's up, everybody? Ultimate DJ's here with another teaching trick video, and today, meow. Hi, it's me, Ultimate DJ's your friendly neighborhood cat person, and I would like to welcome you in to another episode of Teaching Trek. All right, uh, today we're going to talk about progression. Before we get started, please smash that subscribe button. Click on the little thumbs up. Give us a likey like. All right, uh, leave your comments in the section below, as I'm sure there will be some today. I'm going to give some advice that may not be mirrored by everybody in the community. We're going to talk about that coming up. Um, and then, uh, of course, be sure to uh, share this with all your friends so that they can either uh, disagree... <clears throat> or agree with what we have to say here today. But this is an extremely broad, like a very, very broad guide to progression, like crammed into a short, tiny little video. We're going to start all the way back in the early 20s, and we're going to move forward into the late 30s in the span of like 10 minutes, maybe 15 or or. 20. Whatever. Hey, uh, all right, let's get started. First thing I want to pull up uh, is actually a video clip that I actually recorded a couple of days ago in preparation for this video. Okay, so what you see here, this is an actual video clip. Uh, and what we're going to be doing today is talking about the acquisition of transporter patterns. How do you get them? How do you fast track? How do you max officers, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Because there is a balance, right? There's reputation you got to keep in mind. There's reputation events. Then you need to save some of the faction credits for officers and you got to save some for uh, ships, right? There's all kinds of stuff that you got to kind of do here. So it is a little bit of a balance. We're going to breeze through it very, very quickly. First thing I want to do is start with this little bit of a video clip here, okay? This is what I took just a couple of days ago. And the reason that I'm in this particular section is because I wanted to show you a couple of things. First, we're going to take a look at uh, the number of, for example, we're going to use Klingon recruits. I got 267,000. Uh, which is a lot. You guys are going to say, wow, that's a lot. How do you get that? We're going to talk about it, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to come into our faction store. What I do, and I do this every single day, uh, I start by re by buying all these faction recruits. Now, why would I do that? Especially the lower level ones. That's really expensive. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, 100 for 500. Then we get the, a little bit better cost efficiency, 80 for 500. I'm going to buy those too. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to buy the 60s, okay? Because I'm getting 1,500 per bundle. So I'm at 15, 3,000, now at 4,500. All right. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to buy my super bundle, 300 faction credits for 3,000. I've got 7,500 that I just added to my 267. Let's come back over here and just make sure that they all added up, right? We're going to go into the Klingon recruit box. There you go, 275. Five. Okay. Now, here's what. Uh, here's why I'm showing you this, and and why some people are going to agree and disagree. Let's start way back in the early 20s. None of you guys are faction locked yet. Okay. That means when I come in here to the faction store, your reputation is less than a million, maybe one million, two million. If you're in your early 20s, it's probably in the tens or hundreds of thousands, okay? It's very early for you in your game. If you're in Ops 20, you're just getting started, and you've probably only been in the game for a month or two, maybe three, depending on how much you grind, okay? The important thing that I want to start out with here is that for you guys in your low to mid-20s, you really probably, and, and I know this is this is controversial. I believe in dual faction grinding, and I'll tell you why, okay? What that means is you pick two of these, okay? And by the way, I don't even mean pick two for the purposes of building ships and all this other stuff. I mean pick two for the reputation, all right? If you want to go Federation and Klingon, great. If you want to go Klingon and Romulan, cool. If you want to go Romulan and Federation, that's also fine, okay? None of those are really that difficult anymore. You just pick the two that you want to go with, all right? If you want to go with Federation and Klingon, then you're going to grind on the Romulans because that's going to build up the reputation for both of these. If you want to go Federation and Romulan, which is what I originally did, then I grind on the Klingons. The reason that that may be smart or maybe a little bit easier for some people is because of the Klingon system Tygo Core. All right, it's a grinder's paradise there. Okay, but my point is you want to start with dual faction. All right. And the idea between dual faction is keeping them relatively balanced as you're coming up. So when you hit 200,000 in Federation, you want to be 200,000 in Romulan. All right. Or if you hit uh, 300,000 in Klingon and you want to go with Federation as well, then you should be at 300,000 there. You can see, actually, and this is only because of my lock, that I am balanced on Federation and Klingon because this pattern changes post 40. All right. But again, in the lower 20s, all right, you want to pick two 
for grinding. Why do you want that, DJs? Because of these right here, your daily goals, okay? When you are positive, when you are positive in a reputation, you're going to get these, these faction dailies. Okay, these faction dailies are actually a lot more popular or a lot more valuable than a lot of people give them credit for. Okay, you can see I've got all three. Why do I have all three? Because I'm positive in all three factions. As a matter of fact, uh, you saw a moment ago, I'm locked at 10 million on Federation and Klingon and I'm growing my Romulan. Okay, but I still complete these every single day. All right, and this is why if you're if you're going up with single faction, you're only going to get one of these. If you're going up with dual faction, you're going to get two of these. Keep in mind, in the early 20s, late 20s, it is mathematically impossible to do triple faction as you go. Don't do it. Don't try it. It will not work. You got to do two, and then you got to come back and grind out the third one. All right. There's a lot of different ways about how to do this and fast track it. You can use missions. You can archive missions. Even if you come in here, I've got, let's see, where is it? In this section. Yeah, I've got a bunch of missions in my archive section. You'll notice they're almost all uh, faction missions. Okay. I do that so that I can save them for a time when I want to use the reputation built into these missions. Okay. So you're going to want to do that as well. Save some of these for times when you want to use those reputation points. I don't want to use that right now. I'm hanging out. So I'm going to go back, keep those in the archive. All right. But coming in here to your uh, daily mission or your daily goals, you're going to see a couple of different types of faction mission. All right. First of all, you're going to see your hostile one. All right. Let's just take a look inside the Federation one. And again, the reputation is fine. That's all good, but that's not what I'm after. What I'm after is the repair speed ups. Those are great. But more importantly, I'm after these faction credits. Okay. In this one, the Federation faction over here, I'm getting Romulan credits and I'm also getting Klingon credits. Why is this important? Because I want all the credits I can get. These credits lead to maxed officers in more ways than one folks. Okay. You come down here, you've got your mining goals. All right. Inside your mining goals, you got more faction credits uh, down here in the Romulan. We got more faction credits. All these faction credits are important. When you are doing your dual faction, you're only going to get two of these. Okay. And you do them both every single day. You also come on over here into your events, go into your daily section, daily events. You've got a daily reputation event. Again, if you're positive, then you're only going to see you're only going to see the ones that you're positive in, okay? Uh, but inside these, these are spending resources every single day doing ship upgrades or even repairs, anything that you're using these resources on. But if you look over here in your milestones, again, the faction credits. These are so important. The faction credits. All right. Now, if you are focused, and this is where this gets controversial, if you are focused on a dual faction, okay. Hear me, people. If you're focused on a dual faction, I still don't recommend that you build every ship that you can for those factions. If you are under Ops 28, then it's my recommendation that you save enough faction credits to buy the Ops 28 ship for your chosen faction. When I say chosen faction, I don't even mean both. All right, you're going dual, but pick one. All right. And there's going to be a lot of argument. Uh, there's also going to be a lot of, uh, of bias, maybe, or sway, or even uh, going with the flow. But most people choose Federation. Why? The Ops 28 ship, the Saladin, is redonkulous for Ops 28. It is certainly the most powerful ship, and that ship can carry you, folks, all the way to Ops 39. That ship can do it. All right. It's your grinding best friend. The Sally is beast. OK, so regardless of which two that you pick, I am going to recommend that Federation be one of them. And I am going to recommend that the Sally be the ship that gives you the longevity. But here's what you're going to want to do. All right. You're going to want to come in here. You're going to see that one blueprint costs 200 faction credits. So we do 200 times 100. What is that? 2000, 20,000 faction credits. That's what you're going to want to save up to get your Sally. All right. 20,000. Anything beyond 20,000. Now I want you to start spending on faction recruits. OK, I want you to come in here and I've already spent mine for the day. Uh, that's why I showed you that video uh, that I took a couple of days ago. I've already spent all mine for the day. OK, I have not in Romulan, but I'm, I'll explain that at a later time in Federation and Klingon. I have. And again, for those of you like down in the lower 20s, I don't want you to spend the Feder. If you choose to go with the Sally, I don't want you to spend the Federation ones because uh, until you get north of 20,000, because that's for your Sally. 
All right, but let's say you chose Klingon for your second one. You come in here and you buy all of them. And by the way, start at the cheapest one and work your way down. These unlock as your reputation increases. Listen, you might be at the reputation right now where this is the only one that's available. Do it. I know it's expensive. Do it. Okay? Build up those build up these recruits, okay? Because here is where it comes to pass. All right? Now granted, you're going to need some of these for officer promotion, so I don't mean blow them all. You got to balance it a little bit. You got to look as to when you expect to be able to promote an officer that's going to take Klingon faction credits, for example, okay? You do have to balance that. I'm not naive to that. Okay? But you do want to spend all available ones with, you know, a moderate of savings, I guess, for your officers. But you want to spend as many as you can to do these uh, recruit chests, all right? And why would I say that? Because your core officers are in those. If you come in here to your recruit section, we're going to come all the way down here to the Federation Klingon and Romulan recruits, okay? Inside the Romulan chest, you got your core officers. Nero, Vimit, Vimit, Kumak, Livis, Eric, Vela, Javaid. Javate. Okay, there's the ones in the Romulan chest. Over here in the Klingon chest, all right? Gorkon, which is an epic, your core epic. Chankurla, Azetbor, and all the others, okay? A couple of uh, rares, a couple of uncommons, and one epic. Come over to the Federation chest, same thing. There's Kirk Spock, and this, again, is why I recommend the Federation be one that you, that you do push towards, one that you hang on to, because... These officers are arguably amongst the better long-term in the game. To this day, I still use Kirk and Spock, okay? I really do, and Bones has some very good uses as well. So, <clears throat> you're going to want to focus on these officers. Now, once you get your 20,000 shards for the Sally, I do, like I say, recommend that you start buying these Federation recruit tokens with your faction credits. Don't spend them all. You do need to keep some so that you can promote these officers, all right? But here's the idea. <clears throat> when I come in and I buy chests here, I'm going to get these officers. Now, right now, for me, all these officers are maxed. This is how I got them maxed. I didn't wait on the RNG out of the premium or the ultra. I did it right here. Okay? These are where these officers get maxed. And they get maxed quickly, okay? This is not a short-term plan. When you watch this video, you're going to want to watch it again in a couple of weeks, watch it again in a month or two, because this is probably a two- to three-month plan, but you're going to see it paying dividends. All right, so we're going to buy these. We're going to get these officers all maxed, because what happens once they get maxed, everybody? Once an epic, once a rare gets maxed, you start getting transporter patterns. Once an uncommon gets maxed, you start getting officer XP, which, by the way, is extremely, extremely valuable. Okay, so just for just for kicks, I'm going to do one right here and show you. I do a six chest pull for 3000. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to skip because I don't care. I'm getting all transporter patterns and XP. I got 2800 transporter patterns, folks. That's two epic shards. Okay, and I know what DJ two epic shards. What are you talking about? All you got was transporter patterns and I got 2000 transporter patterns also got a nice little chunk of xp there all right let's go where this matters all right and i'm going to come down here and i'm going to show you a couple um uh, examples here okay let's open up chris pike all right you can see right here and i should write this down somewhere so i got some math you see i got forty-three thousand transporter patterns okay that means i got enough for 43 shards one shard is a thousand i've got enough for 43 pike shards right now but keep this number in your head here i'm going to write it down and uh, let me find a find a little pen here it's hard because cats don't have posable thumbs. All right, 43.6. All right, got it. Now, <clears throat> here's what I'm going to do. This is why I bank these. We come back over here into the officer section, and uh, I'm going to come over here to recruits. And I'm, by the way, I'm skipping up over my ultras. Look, I got 80,000. I got 12,000 premiums. I usually save those for something special like a 2X or something like that. We'll see. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. I'm going to come straight here. All right, straight here. And uh, I'm going to, let's see what I've got. I got 68,000 of those. And, oops, wrong one. And I've got, ooh, that's the one I want today. 275,000 of these. Why do I have all these banked up, DJ? <laughs> Once every 11 days, folks. Once every 11 days, we get this event. And this is why I'm making this video today. This is why I took the video a couple days ago to prepare this one. Boom. All right. An officer recruit event solo leaderboard. This only happens once every 11 days. 
You get points for shards. You can save these. Sometimes that there is sometimes there are events during arcs where this comes into handy too, which by the way is why I save my ultras and my premiums just in case I have a surprise event during the arc. But my faction, I always compete in this, all right? So let's take a quick peek. I have already got 1,400 points. I did that, obviously, a minute ago when I did my recruits. Uh, I can see a member of my own team's got 50,000 points. Sorry, vet. I am coming. I'm coming, all right? This event, every 11 days, I compete in it. And four out of five times I win by doing this method. Now, obviously, this is going to get easier as your rep increases. All right. One more peek at the faction store before I take a quick break, and I'm going to show you the impact. All right. As your rep increases, you get more stuff unlocked, even to the point where you can get all the way over here to get that 3,000 one. Okay. And then eventually you're going to get 10 million lock on your first two. Then you go back and you dig out your third. All right. Now you've got three stores that you're doing this with. All right. And by the way, until your ops 39, do all three. Okay, until your Ops 39, do all three. You don't need to be worried about reputation until your Ops 39, not post 10 million, all right? Do all three. Come in here to your daily reputation event. Once you get all three working positively, you let's say you went Federation and Romulan, you may want to skip these for a couple of days or a couple of weeks while you're digging out your Romulan so that you're or digging out your Klingon so that you don't go backwards. But once you get them all locked, and it's not a very long grind, maybe a month, maybe two weeks if you're a super grinder. Once you get all three of them locked, do all three of these every single day. More faction credits. More faction credits. And then you get to come over here and compete in this event. Guys, you can see what I've got. All right, let's go into my recruits very quickly. I'm going to show you what I have. Okay, real quick, let's check this out. We got 5.4 million officer XP. I'm writing this down too. Oh, daggone. No opposable thumbs. All right, 43.4 transporter patterns, 5.4 mil Officer XP. All right. I'm going to come in here. We're going to write this down. Uh, I want you to see I got 83.5 uh, Ultra, 11.7 Premium, and even 449 Discovery. I'm not going to spend any of those. All right. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to spend 68.4K Fed. I'm going to spend 275K Klingon. Okay, guys, we're going to take a very quick break. And when we return, we're going to update our numbers. You saw how many transporter patterns I had. You saw how much officer XP I had. Let's spend 20 minutes clicking away and we'll be back right after these messages. As, as you can see, we're moving through this pretty daggone quick. <laughs> if only it actually moved through this that quickly. But take a quick peek as we're flashing through this. You'll see every six chest, every 3000 faction credits I'm spending, I'm getting somewhere between two and three on occasion, getting 4000 transporter patterns that's two epic shards three epic shards four epic shards every single time i do this so you got to think that adds up very very nicely as far as epic shard redemption all right sometimes they're a little low there was one uh, a minute ago where i only got 1700 transporter patterns all right but you know that's one epic shard and then the 700 carry forward there was another one where i got 4050 so there was four epic shards every time i click this box i'm getting epic shards in my transporter pattern store now, some people are going to say, DJ, you can't spend all of your faction credits that way. I mean, yeah, the Sally's a great ship. It's going to carry you to 39, but you've still got two other levels of ship. You got the 32s and you got the Epics at 34. Well, I have gone on record many, many times. I know it, even this seems unpopular, but those ships and those levels are so closely bound together. I personally don't like investing into the rare 32 ships. I know some people are going to argue with me on that. Some people are going to say that they're meant to be built. I get that. I'm not one of them. Okay. I don't believe in building the 32s. I built two of them. I regret it fully. All the materials, all the faction credits on a ship, I literally never fly. I flew it for a couple of months and then I moved on to my epics. That's it. That's all it took. So, listen, at 28, yeah, sure, start working on your officers. These officers last forever. They're going to be with you for a long, long time. Now, as you get closer to 34, sure, then you want to take your chosen faction, be it, uh, and, and by the way, as you get closer to 34, you really probably should be faction uh, or uh, rep locked at 10 million, hopefully, as you approach 30 million, or uh, uh, the... 
34 is what I was trying to say. As you approach Ops 34, you should be hopefully Ops locked, and you're working on grinding your third one out, okay? Which means even more faction credits and faction recruit tokens that you're going to get on a daily basis. But eventually, as you approach 34, you are going to want to start saving your faction credits yet again for the epic ship. And again, I do recommend you start with only one of the epics. Eventually, I do think that a second epic will serve you quite well. I've got the Enterprise. I love my auger. I love it. I love the auger. All right. Uh, and I do use both of them quite frequently. So I wouldn't necessarily, you know, listen, you're going to skip the rare ships. So it's not, uh, it's not impossible to think that you might actually build and use two of the epics if that's your long-term play especially if you want to camp out at 39 for a while which i highly recommend it's very lucrative uh so anyway use those faction credits and uh and eventually start saving some and of course you're gonna have to use some at some point to promote some of these officers that you're getting enough shards to promote and max and level up so you're gonna have to do some of that there this should always be secondary it should always be secondary to what your primary need is in the game but don't waste them don't waste them on ships you don't need or officers whose abilities you're never going to use you don't need to upgrade everything how can you get more faction credits we talked about the dailies we talked about your daily reputation event you can also get them out of the borg store you can also get them from scouts and yes those are important i know scouts are obnoxious and annoying but you should do them because faction credits are one of the most underrated currencies in this game trust me Trust me. Trust me. Looks like we're getting ready to wrap up here. We're back, folks. Only, oh, God, so many clicks. Only it looks like two clicks left. All right, I'm down to 5,000 with three clicks. I'm uh, going to finish these up. And whoop, another three epics. 3.7 epics, I guess. There's one more. Let's see what we got here. Um, another three epic shards. I dig it. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go ahead and finish it off with a three chest pull. Uh, got another one and a half epic shards there and you know might as well go ahead and take out that last one now you may have noticed something you may have actually noticed that uh, I've been scoring all this time and I only did the Klingons folks take a look you saw that I had 1440 points when I started here just about five ten minutes ago and I only spent the Klingon shards I had 275,000 you now see I have less than 500 I think I had 100 left that got me roughly 132,680 points. It's not for sure because there is RNG involved, all right? But hey, that's a pretty good lead, all right? For some of you, this is going to be more than sufficient to win. It may not be for me. Some of these guys are relatively competitive. So what am I going to do? Well, I just showed you a minute ago that I only did the Klingon. Look what I'm sitting on. That's my reserve in case I need it. <laughs> Someone starts chasing me in the last minute. I snipe him. All right, uh, but it's not a very quick snipe, so you might have to start a few minutes early. Plus, if I really, really need it, I've got all three of these chests down here, too, which I said I don't like to spend unless I have to, but I do want to win because if I come over here and I take a look uh, going back into that event, it is a very decently paying event. Okay, come over here into the SLB, nice little chunk of latinum there. Uh, good crystal, and this is for Ops 39. It does scale. Not all of you guys are going to get this, but oh man, I could totally go for that trite. Uh, some rare crystal, good. I like that. Eh, the parts, blah, blah, blah. ship XP. That's a small amount, but still valuable. I like the latinum and the and the crystal and the trite. That's worth it to me, especially for something that I'm building up and working on anyway. What did it do in other areas of the game, DJ? Let's wrap up our video with this. Under officers, I come in. I now have 8.3 million officer XP. Folks, I had 5.4 when we started. That's almost 3 million. 2.9 million officer XP that I just picked up by doing something for free every single day. Guys, what is that? Like two and a half faction hunts worth of XP right there? All right, dig it. Uh, let's come over here. And uh, let's see, what was the other thing we were going to check? Ah, transporter patterns. Let's go into the transporter patterns and see how I did. Uh, let's take a look. You can see I haven't bought any, haven't spent any. Now at 293,000 as compared to the 43,000 that I had before. 250,000 transporter patterns in one day. All right. 250,000. 
Uh, that's 250 epic shards. What could you guys do with 250 epic shards out of one of these officers up here? By the way, don't ever spend them on Kirk, Gorkon, or Nero. Those are your cores. That's how you're getting the patterns. All right, don't do that. All right, but guess who else is up here? Your triangle busters, okay? Kang, Shar, and Mar. Those are great, all right? Pike, if you don't have him unlocked yet, or if you need to tear him up a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, Khan, woo! Khan is a big one. Six of ten, great. Okay, by the way, Gary, great on stats. So is, so is Crass, good on stats. Um, but guys, 250 shards. Now, how did we get there? How long, DJ? How long did you have to save to get those 275,000 Klingon credits? You must have saved forever. Nope, I saved for, you know, roughly 11 days. I did probably have a little bit more left over, just like I come in here uh, a moment ago and I showed you that I still had, what, 60,000 Fed credits. I may not need them, which means the 68,000, I may not need these today. So I may get to bank those for next time. But what you saw on the faction store, and again, I'm ops, uh, well, I'm triple locked. Doesn't matter about your ops when it comes to the faction store. Once you get to 10 million lock, there's 15, 3,000, 4,500, 7,500 per day. I do it every single day. 7,500 per day. Let's break out our handy dandy calculator. 7,500 times 11 days. That's how often the event comes around. I could get 82,500. Uh, per faction, per faction, per event cycle. All right. Now, I somebody's going to say, well, you're not doing Romulan. You're right. I'm not doing Romulan, folks. Whoops, sorry. Glitched out. I'm not doing Romulan because I told you post 40, it changes a little bit. I am now beginning my trek towards 1 billion. <laughs> so, uh, therefore, I'm going to need G4 ships which means I'm going to need faction credits to buy the G4 ship. So I'm not actually using this method with the Romulan credits because that is who I've chosen to move forward with. All right. You can see I can buy Vortivor. I can buy Valdor. I'm not yet. All right. Because I'm going after that bad lad right there. All right. But that takes 590,000 faction credits. You can see I'm well on my way, but nowhere near ready. Okay, but I'm also still in Ops 39. I got to be Ops 46 to build this ship. I'm starting now. Planning your progression. Folks, I know this was maybe a slightly longer video than I intended, but it demonstrates the long-term play, the long-term ability to max these officers. I'm going to close up with this. You go into the transporter factions. You can see I'm in Ops 39. All right. I do spend a little bit of money. I haven't gone crazy. I'm certainly not a, a whale or maybe even a dolphin. All right. I play the game just like you guys. I play probably more time than the average player, but I definitely grind. Okay. Maxed Kirk. All right. Which he should be because I'm getting the transporter patterns. Max Gorkon and Max Nero. That makes sense. Guess what else I've done with transporter patterns using this exact method. Kang. Maxed. Char. Maxed. Marcus. Maxed. By the way, I didn't do this with full pulls and RNG. All right. You know, I'm not maxed on Pike. All right. I, I'll probably work on him later. Definitely not maxed on Carol. All right. I'm getting closer, uh, but not maxed on Carol. Gary, no, uh, I haven't been working on him. All right. Con, maxed. 6 of 10, maxed. Crass, maxed. Guys, I did all this with transporter patterns. All right. Somebody's going to say, oh, man, what a first world problem you have all right that you can't get your your pike max and you got all these other epics you must be spending money no folks i'm doing it this way folks when i started doing this it was literally one year this is the one year anniversary of me starting this path and i have almost every epic officer maxed if you don't think that you could do it it does take a few months okay it's going to take several months but you can do it too this is long-term gameplay and how you can plan and make it work your way in your game with your chosen faction and your chosen ships and still max your officers. What do you think, community? Huh, was this eye-opening or what? Leave your comments in the section below because I'm sure somebody's going to fight with me about something. Uh, leave your comments in the section below. I'd love to agree with you or debate you, whatever happens to be the, the topic, okay? Uh, we'll have some fun with that. Also, click that subscribe button. Like the video if this gives you a little bit of help and a little bit of insight into how you should be playing your game, all right, or at least one way that you can play your game, all right? Smash that thumbs up. Share it with your team, anybody that could use some progression, whether it be Ops 20 
or Ops 39, okay? This is something that even Ops 40 plus whales are doing with their secondary factions. Yes, folks, even VIPs are using transporter patterns to max their officers that aren't necessarily maxed yet. It is a thing, and if you use it, then you too will have stronger officers, stronger statistics, stronger bonuses on your ships. Guys, this makes all the difference in the world. What do you think? Let us know. My name is Ultimate DJs. Thank you for watching this slightly extended teaching trick video. But like I said, lots of progression. Sure, tiny little window. Hope you guys like it. My name is Ultimate DJs. We'll see you next time. Love you, man. Bye.